politicians because they say that the art of compromise is politics. No. No more compromise. Anyone who compromises as a politician is unfit for office. You see, we need a new breed of public servant. Someone who will say, I will protect your liberty at all costs. You have given me your precious vote. And even if it means giving up my liberty for the protection of your liberty, I'll do that. Even if it means giving up my life to protect your life and your liberty and your prosperity, I'm willing to do that. And any candidate who wishes to put their name on the ballot and ask for our precious vote and does not possess those qualities, they may be eligible for office, but they're not qualified for office. We're facing not just King George. We're facing King George to the 20th power. And that spirit that it took to found this country is going to take to get this country right to the 20th power. If some, look, it's up to us as the bosses, it's up to us as the voters, it's up to us as the people to look into the eyes and spirits of those who have asked for our votes and put their names on the ballot and make an assessment, vet them truly. Do you have the spirit that it takes to overthrow King George to the 20th power? Are you willing to die? Are you willing to go to jail to protect my liberties? To tell Washington, you can rule as you wish but now let me see you enforce it because I will not allow you to anymore abridge the liberties that God gave me. Not anymore. No man, no body of men and women, elected or not, have the right to take away those liberties that God gave us. That's the founding principles of this country. And if our elected officials do not have that spirit, they're not qualified to be our elected officials, our public servants. It's up to you to make the vetting. It's up to you to make the analysis. Who on the ballot even this year has that spirit? Maybe a little bit late now, but come 2012 and 2014, these are qualifications that those who want our vote must possess. And what's wrong with a little jail for the sake of liberty? Anybody ever heard of Mohandas K. Gandhi, Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi? Raise your hand went to jail for the liberation of his people. Ever heard of Nelson Mandela? Raise your hand. Went to jail for a generation for the liberty of his people. Ever heard of Martin Luther King Jr.? Raise your hand. Went to jail, wrote letters, inspiring letters for the liberation of all of us. Ever heard of the Apostle Paul? Raise your hand. I just read from him. And where was it written from? Jail, for the liberation of God's people. Do we have folks who call themselves patriots that are ready to pay that price? That's what it's going to take to get this country right. And anybody else that's short of that, thank you for your service, but you're going to have to move on. This is not your time. This is not your place. This is not your era. I don't care if you're running for president, senator, governor, county judge, precinct chair. When someone is willing to give you their vote, are you willing to give up your liberty for theirs? See, the Bible says here in the first verse of chapter 7, it says, purify ourselves. Purify ourselves. We need to make a, an assessment as conservatives, and I'm going to guess that most of you are GOP Republicans. We got to make ourselves, we got to make an assessment. What within our body is contaminating us? The Bible, the Bible says you to purify ourselves. Who are true conservatives? Who are uncorrupted or uncorruptible? See, all of us, I'm sure, to a person, are focused on what's going on in Washington, D.C., 2,000 miles away. The truth be told, we got some corruption happening right here in this building. Right here. We have leadership that has compromised. We have leadership that has surrendered. We have leadership in this building, steps away, that have overflowed its banks that the Texas Constitution is supposed to be holding them within. But we're focused on Washington, and we have compromisers and surrenders, surrenderers right here in this building. We spew Ninth Amendment rights and Tenth Amendment rights and state sovereignty. When are we going to act like it as citizens of Texas? When are we going to tell them you can make your ruling let me see you enforce it. This is Texas. We don't cotton to tyranny. The man of God prayed 
for those who died for our independence down there in San Antonio because as Texans, we have an additional spirit with us. We have a bit of a, a spirit on steroids from what happened in the American Revolution because within us is the spirit of Goliath, spirit of Gonzalez, the spirit of the Alamo, and thank you, Jesus, the spirit of San Jacinto where we kicked tyranny's butt in about 15 minutes. We just don't cotton to tyranny down here. And when is the leadership in this building going to stir up that spirit and say, don't give us lip service anymore. Don't toy with our votes. Don't toy with our liberty. Don't be talking loud and then tiptoeing and taking the money from Washington. Don't paint yourself as conservative when the debt level has gone up. Don't paint yourself as conservative when the tax burden has gone up. Don't paint yourself as conservative when you've, when you've been part of a, a huge land grab. Is that Texas? Is that liberty? Is that conservatism? It is not. And the Bible says purify ourselves and be honest with who we are and what our principles are and hold them accountable. I will not compromise. I will not surrender. Would you? What we need are public servants who, first of all, serve God. If they don't serve God, they cannot serve us. If they don't serve God and cannot serve us, then they're only interested in serving their self-interest. And we've got a whole bunch of folks in there that fit that description. They're there for their own self-interest. They're there to build a legacy for themselves. They want their names on post offices and on bridges, overpasses. They're not ready to die. They're not ready to go to jail and lose their liberty for the protection of our liberty. They're not qualified to be your public servant. If you want to know the difference between liberalism and the principles that we stand for, constitutional conservatism, you can find it in one verse, John 10.10. 10. You churchgoers, you know it. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. You see, liberalism, socialism, progressivism, Marxism, all those destructive isms are part A of that verse. Kill, steal, and destroy. They steal even the futures of our children. They steal the fruits of your labor. That's liberalism, that's socialism, that's progressivism. They kill. They even kill the very children that they say that they're sworn to protect. In the womb, the unborn, to the point of genocide. 1,800 black children were murdered in the womb today across this nation. 20 in Houston alone. 20 million since Roe v. Wade in 1973. Oh, but they, they surround themselves with the children. When they sign a bill that's going to destroy our liberties, they put children next to them as if to say, if you stand against us, you're against the children. But they kill them daily. They take money from the facilitators of the genocide. The African American community is 15, or about 13% of the population. 36% of all abortions performed in this country are upon African American babies. Three quarters of all, of, of all African American conceptions in an abortion. But these liberals, these socialists, these progressives, these Democrats, wish to stand before us and say, it's for the children. 